All right, guys, it's time. When this video goes live, Orn Lou's Big Nomad Cup will be tomorrow. The tournament will begin Tuesday, July 28th at 16 GMT, so uh, definitely go check it out. Well, it will be the qualifier to get into the main event. The main event starts uh, the following Tuesday. But how could how else could I kick off an Ornlu tournament, my very own tournament, without doing a tier list? So yes, here will be the big Nomad tier list. Now, note that this tier list is designed for the Nomad Nomad map, like the, the, the Nomad, you know, the one titled Nomad. Uh, but it will, to a lesser extent, apply to the other uh, hybrid-y, watery sorts of maps, eh, more or less. Uh, like Compass, like Hoodoo, Four Lakes, or Cross, or whatever we called it. <laughs> um, and uh, some of the other ones. I don't know. There's another one. So, with this tier list, and for the event in general, it is played with random civilizations. So, in some ways, the tier list doesn't matter as much, because you're, it doesn't like it's not like you get to choose which Civ you get to play. But on the other hand, it will help you, I believe, get a good idea of, okay, this team rolled, like, you know, two A-tier Civs, a B-tier Civ, and a C-tier Civ. And you can sort of use that to gauge the relative overall strength of the, uh, the Civ compositions that each team is dealt. So I do think there is still plenty of utility in doing this. And, of course, it's kind of one of the things I'm known for. So, without further ado, let's get into this. Uh, just to sort of differentiate each tier real quick. S tier, obviously going to be just the very few, very best Nomad Civs that you're just going to be like, Oh yeah, I rolled them. And they, these ones are just economically so powerful, um, have lots of options, and that is primarily because they can get a, a, a fishing ship early on. Uh, hint, hint. A tier. Um, these are going to be the very, very strong Nomad Civs. They have bonuses that lend themselves to Nomad in particular, whether that be water bonuses or, you know, good neat units plus eco bonuses that are relevant, that sort of thing. B tier Civs are just going to be decent overall Civs, but perhaps lacking something special on Nomad. Like, they're, they're a good Civ, but not especially good on Nomad. They they don't have anything that lends themselves to the map in particular, although they are fine. C tier, pretty much the same thing, but um, more mediocre. Perhaps they don't have a great navy, or they have an eco bonus that doesn't really lend itself to Nomad, like a farming bonus or something. Not just Slavs that are more civs than that, but you, you guys get the idea. D tier are civs that can potentially shine if you are in the right situation. Maybe your Civ is a little too aggressive and you need to be close to your opponent and then tower rush them or something. Um, or your Civ just needs a lot of time to get up and running, so you need to be far away. So in certain situations, eh, they can work, but uh, not so great. And F tier are just the very worst Civs that uh, they, they aren't great Civs and they just don't lend themselves to Nomad. So, with all of that talking aside, let's get into this. I'm uh, going to go through these sieves and then uh, rearrange them like I normally do. But that, that bit isn't as important as just the overall tier placing. Aztecs. Uh, let's start with D tier on them. So, with Aztecs, their main eco bonus, their extra carry capacity, primarily helps you in farming, which isn't really something you want to do super early on Nomad. Uh, your navy is awful, you lack a lot of good late game options. Eagle warriors can be very strong, but remember on Nomad and a lot of maps like that, there are a lot of choke points, and that isn't really as great. Aztec monk can be really powerful, so it's not like there aren't situations where Aztecs can shine, but it's just not really an amazing Nomad Civ. Berbers, meanwhile, let's put them in B tier. They're like borderline A and B tier. So we'll have to see where the rest of the civs play out and maybe bump them up or down. So Berbers, faster moving villagers is really nice, especially in the beginning of Nomads, because your villagers start all over the place and then you can converge them for a town center uh, more quickly than other civilizations, which is really nice. Uh, beyond that, you have faster moving ships, which can be great for hunting down enemy ships or running away with your own ships. So that's really great. You have a great um castle like fast castle into castle drop which is very very common and powerful on nomad 
uh, because your unique unit, the Camel Archer, is obviously incredible. Um, and yeah, just have good navy, good flexible late game. Uh, you are still lacking some of like the heavy hitting tools in late game, though. You're lacking sea drams and paladins and halberdiers and good monks and all that. But, you know, it's certainly not the end of the world. You're also lacking a, a super tangible eco bonus beyond the faster moving villagers. Like, it's definitely more of an eco bonus than it is in, say, like Arabia or Arena or something, because getting those villagers together faster is really great. But still, it's not like a... A super long-term bonus. I think they don't quite make it into A tier. Britons. I think that's a clear C tier for me. So Britons, they're no right civ, but they are they're kind of slow. Um, you can get sheep at least reasonably often on Nomad, uh, and that can be nice. You know, the cheap TCs can be really nice. You do have a good boom, but if like you're far away from somebody or from everybody rather. It can be a long time before help actually arrives for your teammates just because, you know, you get your archers and the archers have to walk all the way across the map. And this happens frequently enough that it, it gives me a certain degree of pause. Of course, if you're fairly close to the enemy, then the extra range archers can be great. But even then, you're still lacking anything that really makes you special on Nomad. Like, Britons are still good for the reasons that Britons are always good, but it... Nomad isn't something that lends itself to the Britain strengths as much as uh, other maps do. Bulgarians. Hovering between C and D tier. Mm, let's take them in C tier for now. So with Bulgarians, you actually do save 50 stone on your starting town center. So thinking about it, you can actually afford two towers with Bulgarians on Nomad maps. Because you start with uh, 300 stone, because you start with plus 100 stone compared to normal, so you can build your first town center. Um, but Bulgarians saving 50 stone means that you'll have 250 stone, which, of course, uh, equals two watchtowers. So that's actually pretty sick. Um, and maybe on, say, like a land nomad or uh, Bedouins, the two land maps uh, in our tournament, uh, then Bulgarians can be potentially an even more powerful role, like rolling the sieve. Uh, but obviously, water isn't really the strength of the Bulgarians, as in their navy is awful. Um, Krepos dropping can be very powerful, and they do have a lot of really strong late game options, especially in like team games. They have siege onagers, siege rams, konix, uh, you know, all the things that uh, Berbers lack. Uh, you do miss bombard cannon, but you still have just such a powerful late game army of fully upgraded halberdiers, um, you know, baggins, two handed swordsmen. Yeah, just like. They have a lot of really like strong options, and I think that's just enough to squeak them into C tier, combined with their early tower rush aggression and crepos and stuff like that. Burmese! Uh, also C tier, I think. So with Burmese, you have good monks, you have free lumberjack upgrade, which is nice. You have a good castle into unique unit with your Arambai. But beyond that, there really isn't anything special about them. Like, they still have a lot of, like, good options, but to, to me, like, they just lack something, like, great that jumps out at me that, like, really suits itself to Nomad. Like, yeah, the free lumber camps are, upgrades are nice, but your navy is still fairly lukewarm as the game goes on. And yes, you see late game navy on Nomad at least decently often, so having a meh late game navy can be a problem. But I mean, they're, they're all right. They're fine. Yeah, well, C tier. All right, Byzantines, be our first A-tier civilization. They're a Civ, and they're in A-tier. Um, you have the free Town Watch, which can be nice in terms of seeing early tower rushes, which are very common on Nomad. Also, your faster firing fire ships is really, really good, um, especially as it is a very fire ship-centric uh, meta when you're, you know, skirting around the edges of the map with a few ships in Feudal Age and in the Castle Age. And then, of course, cheaper Imperial Age is really great. Byzantines have a full navy. They have a full almost everything. And they have a lot of really strong late game options. Uh, the, really, the only thing that prevents them from being an S tier is they lack some heavier options. Like, Cataphracts are still, like, even on the new patch, they're still really slow to get into. Um, and even then, they can be a little bit weak. You do have Bombard Towers and cheap Halbs and Siege Rams, but no Siege Engineers or Siege Onagers. So they're, they're just not quite at that S tier level, but they're still really good, don't get me wrong. Celts. You know what? In thinking about it, 
I think Celts are pretty decent. You have the faster Lumberjacks, and you have a really strong late game. But I still think they're B tier. I still think they have a lot of powerful options, and the faster working Lumberjacks is really nice on Nomad and having fast units with Woad Raiders potentially. Um, that can also be really, really nice. Um, but when I'm thinking about that, that also pretty much applies to Burmese too, just with a few different strengths. So I actually do think I need to bump Burmese up into A tier. I've already talked myself into it. Um, so we're going to do that and then uh, have Celts join them right there. Chinese. Ugh. How the mighty have fallen. Are they F tier? Maybe D tier? They're, they're not good, guys. Uh, now you only get the three extra villagers once the town center is completed, meaning that you don't get your TC up any faster, you have very few resources, you can't dock right away, and then if you don't have the best starting food income, then you're really, really screwed. It's They're just not a great nomad civ anymore. It's amazing how just when you get those three villagers just makes all the difference in the world just... It's it literally is the difference between them being like S tier to F tier. It's uh, kind of kind of crazy how that works out, uh, but still, it's not like it's completely hopeless for them. Uh, as if you can get going, um, you know, Chukanu, Bombard Towers, Siege Rams can all still be quite good. But uh, again, they still do have their weakness to Siege Onagers. Cumin D tier, a civilization that is very good but does not lend itself to Nomad in any way. Your navy is bad. You're going for a 2TC boom on Nomad seems so suicidal against like any amount of early monk siege plays. Like it's a really, really close call on Arena where you get free stone walls and space and you don't usually get that on, uh, on Nomad. And then it's like, if you're not using that, then you have no real bonus. And then you're missing a lot of good late game options. Like, yeah, you have Paladins that are speedy, and Kipchoks can be a nice castle drop unit, but I feel like, it, especially with all the tight little corridors that you see on Nomad between, like, the hills and trees and uh, shorelines, it's, this isn't uh, something that excites me for humans. You do have Siege Rams, you do have Siege Onagers, just like Aztecs, so it's not like you're completely hopeless, and fully upgraded Paladins that are even faster. So I think they do make their way into D tier, but it's... Uh, not great. Ethiopians. I think they're also going to be in D tier. Not a great Nomad Civ. The extra 100 food and gold can be nice, but you don't really have any other eco bonuses. And in a lot of ways, I feel like Britons kind of do what they do better on Nomad. Uh, they're still fairly slow if you need to get to your teammates quickly. And just not having the great eco of Britons in either early game or mid game tends to be a bit of a problem. Yeah, your Ethiopian Siege can be really good in the late game, but that's still a long ways to get there, and it's really expensive and slow still. To me, they just seem like a, a somewhat worse version of Britons. So if Britons are C-tier, that makes them D-tier, I feel. Franks... Franks are a tricky one. On the one hand, if you have some space with them, you can totally get up to Paladins and just you know use Amazing Frank late game. But on the other hand, if you don't have like any forage bushes, you don't have a good navy, you don't really have a ton of other bonuses, probably have to bump them down to D tier. But I guess like in all situations, actually now that I'm thinking about it again, Ethiopians, Franks, and Aztecs all have situations where they can really shine and at least do that somewhat consistently. I feel like humans will very, very rarely get that. So I think I actually will bump them down to S tier. We're, we're just making changes on the fly, true big nomad style. But yeah, Franks, if you can get some space with them, if you can boom up with them, uh, their boom isn't amazing on nomad. Again, farming bonuses generally aren't the best on nomad. And yeah, just really crappy navy. Um, probably D tier. Go, 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 then Goth Infantry Flood can be amazing, but that's also less incredible when it comes to a map with a lot of tight choke points, like on Nomad, because then your infantry can get bottlenecked fairly comfortably, or rather uncomfortably. Um, beyond that, you don't really have much of an eco bonus. The Free Loom, eh, not really something that's going to help you in this tournament too much. 
uh, because there is no villager fighting and the loom upgrade only kicks in after your first town center is completed. So it's not like if uh, you're playing Nomad and Ranked and you just want to lame people with Goths, it's, you can't do that. It's just like their eco is a lot worse than Frank's and they take a lot longer to get up and running than Frank's. And yeah, that probably unfortunately lands them a spot in F tier. <laughs> a lot of very low civs early on, I just realized. Don't worry, it's not all bad. Huns! Oh god, do I have to put them in F tier? No, I can put them in D tier. I can put them in D tier. Similar story to Frank's, except they're a little bit slower off the bat because you can't dock right away due to starting with uh, less wood. But you do have wood savings in the early to mid game due to not needing to build houses. Also, um, space can sometimes be an issue on Nomad. And actually having places to put houses can be a bit of an issue. Huns obviously do not have to worry about that. And at least you do have cav archers, uh, which excel in the more choke pointy sort of things, uh, which can be totally fine. And then beyond that, Paladins and Tarkins and stuff. Not a great sieve by any means, but I, I don't think they're they're nearly F tier level hopeless. I mean, Huns are Huns, right? Incas. I think I'm going to put Incas in C tier, but it's kind of borderline between C and D tier. In comparing them to like Aztecs, I think Incas are actually a little bit better. Uh, like Bulgarians, actually, you do get some starting stone save, but no, nowhere near as much. You get, I think, what, 15 extra stone or something. They're all right. Uh, they do have a better navy than Aztecs, which is nice. They do have fully upgraded galleons. Uh, beyond that, Kamiuks can also be really strong. Um, their Eagle Warriors are a little bit worse than Aztecs, but Incas have a lot of very uh, diverse options in terms of what they can throw at uh, enemies. And in a very chaotic setting, that tends to be situations where Incas excel anyway. And yeah, I think that that's just enough to bump them up. Oh, also the Free Llama... Uh, is actually a really nice boon on Nomad because you get a guaranteed source of food as soon as your town center uh, pops up. So that's really, really nice. Um, nowhere near enough to be B tier, but uh, in thinking things through, I definitely think they deserve a spot in C tier. Indians, welcome to the C tier club. So Indians, cheaper villagers is always going to be nice on any game mode where you build villagers. So all of them. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's nice. Camels, not as great as on open maps, um, but still, like, Indians are decent. Um, your navy's alright, not amazing. Um, but you can still do plenty of powerful things with Indians. Uh, you know, you have uh, good gunpowder, elephant archers, obviously. I mean, if, if you get to late game and get to a ton of elephant archers, they're probably going to be pretty hard to stop. But uh, obviously, it's going to be mostly with the camel focus. And I still think they they sneak into C tier. Italians! Oh, fine, they're getting to good civs again. Italians, definitely an A tier civ. Nomad is, at its core, a hybrid map. Italians are great on that. You know what? Let's just jump jump the shark and put Japanese right next to them. Because these two civs, they just... They just go hand in hand, both alphabetically and the sorts of maps and situations in which they are good. Um, both have strong archer options. Japanese have the better halberdiers, but Italians have access to very good gunpowder. Um, both have strong tower pushes in late game. Uh, but obviously the big selling point here is the navies. Uh, Japanese fishing ships are awesome. Cheaper fishing ships are awesome as well as cheaper dock techs and cheaper aging up. Japanese with the cheaper drop-off sites, you can be making a lot of drop-off sites uh, as you're, you know, hunting around the map for any food. Um, they don't have the overwhelming uh, late game prowess to, I think, bump them into S tier. And it's not like just as overwhelming as I think the S tier civs will be. Um, but still, definitely good, good A tier civs. At least so far, we're, we're very well uh, balanced. So at least I'm happy with that, even if we are a little on the low end. Yeah, probably C tier. Come here, all about that farming bonus, right? <laughs> right? Oh, wait. It's Nomad, you want to be making fishing ships for a good long while. I mean, the farming bonus will be great when it kicks in, but that's just not going to be for a, a long time. Uh, beyond that, you're, you're just kind of slow to get up and running. If, like, Celts and Khmer had their eco bonuses swapped, then they would, be, they would swap tiers, I feel. But Celts' eco bonus is way more useful way earlier on. Um, but, of course, like, if you get to late game with Khmer, like, they're... Still late game Khmer. Notably, battle, battle elephants have been nerfed in the most recent patch, so definitely um, something to consider. Uh, and of course, Khmer lo no longer have bombard cannon, um, but they will still flatten stuff in late game uh, if you're not careful. Um, but that requires 
the correct situation. And I feel like Chimera are a bit worse in very scrappy, uh, like tower rushy sorts of moving town center locations or Celt mangoes eating TC. I felt I feel like Celts are a little bit better in that respect. Same with Burmese, same with Berbers. Koreans might surprise some people, but we're bumping them into A tier. Koreans are actually a fantastic nomad sieve. Uh, the extra villager line of sight is really good. You know, for Nomad, you don't really know where you're starting. And with Koreans, uh, you could scout a lot of the map with your initial villagers. You can almost always put your town center in a pretty good location. And then beyond that, you have a great navy. Uh, now 20% cheaper uh, wood discount on the new patch. A fly is, like, buzzing around. It's... Ah! Uh, where was I? Oh yeah, uh, your tower rush is insane if you need the really scrappy games. Turtle ships can be awesome if you can get up to Castle Age fairly quickly, which is very common on Nomad. Uh, and then you just flatten them with turtle ships, or you flatten them with war wagons from a castle. I, I think Koreans are actually a really strong Nomad sieve. The one thing that's holding them back is, of course, their lack of amazing eco bonus. Uh, they still don't really have that, but they have so many powerful military options throughout pretty much... You know, almost all of the game, and on both land and water, I think they definitely earn a spot in A tier. Uh, and the extra villager LOS is great as well. Lithuanians, welcome to the S tier. Yeah, Lithuanians are insane. Um, the extra 150 food means that you can actually just have a bunch of your villagers go onto wood right away. We saw this a lot in Battle of Africa 2 on the map Canyon Lake, if you remember, where they had the, the little lake in the middle, and then the Lithuanian player would like dock right away, and then have a bunch of villagers on wood and could go for some early fishing ships and that's good stuff uh but beyond that yeah you don't have like the best eco bonus ever but where they lack a little bit in longer term eco bonuses they make up for in insane late game options the latest as pictured right there is in my opinion probably the single best unit in the game right now it is insanely good um and it can be very very hard to stop uh, but beyond that, you have excellent halbs, uh, you do have bombard towers, you have amazing monks, your siege is pretty bleh, but of course you can scoop up some relics still, there are relics on Nomad, and then you can go for some uh, amazing paladins or what have you. Uh, definitely just a super strong civilization on Nomad. Magyars! Yeah, I think they make it into D tier. I don't think they're, they're quite F tier. You have no naval bonuses, but your navy tech tree is surprisingly decent. Um, you do have Shipwrite, I'm pretty sure you also have Dry Dock, um, and Galleons, um, I think they only miss, like, Fast Fire Ship and Elite Cannon Galleon, if I recall correctly, or sorry, Heavy Demo and Elite Cannon Galleon. Um, that isn't really the biggest thing with them, though. Uh, you do see Scouts sometimes on Nomad, they can definitely catch an opponent off guard, um, but you really don't have an amazing eco bonus, you do have a lot of powerful late game options with, uh, Magyar Heavy Cav Archers being amazing, Paladin's obviously an option. Uh, Magyar Hussars potentially as well. Missing a lot of great siege potential, uh, and again missing uh, critically an eco bonus, but still you have the flexible enough tech tree that I think you can make it work. Fully upgraded Arbol S2 if you uh, feel so inclined. M -m 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 -lay. A tier. Very similar to Italians and Japanese. Uh, it's just a great hybrid map sieve, right? So with Malay, uh, the faster age up is just great. Extra dock line of sight can be great as well. You can see even more quickly if you dock to pond. Now that isn't that just wonderful. Um, but harbor spam can be actually quite powerful on Nomad in a lot of situations. Uh, bombard towers, bombard cannons, arbalests, all that good stuff. A very strong navy. I mean, when you think of civs that are powerful on uh, hybrid maps, literally the first three civs that jump to mind are Italians, Japanese, and Malay. Like It's, it's what they do. And, uh, yeah, no shocker there. Malians, welcome to S tier again. This one might be surprising for people, but you have to remember that your wood discount uh, on buildings starts from the very beginning of the game, meaning that Malians, alongside the other S tier civilization that uh, we will be talking about, uh, Malians can build a dock and a fishing ship, town center, and house all right away with their starting wood, meaning you just get an instant fishing ship, which is like an instant good villager with good consistent food income early on that's awesome gabettos can be really powerful in mid game with like siege and monk play um late game yeah malians do fall off but you still have so many options um 
Ferimba cavalry, uh, fully upgraded heavy camels with Ferimba as well, going to be super good. And yeah, you still have champ scarls too. I, they're the weakest late game of the S tier sieves, but they have so many options and they have such a strong start that I still don't think you can even put them in A tier. Like, Malians are amazing. Mayans! Back when they had four villagers, they probably would have eked their way into S tier. Yeah, I'm going to put them in uh, B tier. I, I like them a little bit more than Incas. So with Mayans, one, Castle Drop into Plumed Archers is great. Um, you also have a decent navy, but that's not really the selling point. But yeah, the Castle Drop into Plumed Archers is great. The longer lasting resources can be a lifesaver, especially with the food, uh, the food resources you have available to you or not available to you. In the beginning of the game, it can be, you know, just having a little bit longer to find that extra sheep or boar or whatever can really, really help you out. And you still do get the extra villager. And unlike Chinese who start with a wood penalty and you can't even make any villagers right away uh, with Mayans, that is much less of an issue. Uh, I mean, you grab Loom, but then you can just keep on going. So yeah, I still think Mayans slot into B tier fairly well. Uh, and of course, Eldorado Eagle Warriors can uh, swarm bases and still do uh, work. Mongols, also in B tier. I'm loving this distribution so far. Really going into this, I only the only civs I knew where they would be uh, would be the S tier civs and then like most of the A tier civs and nothing else I really had mapped out. So I'm liking this so far. Um, but yeah, Mongols, if you have Hunt, they're amazing. If you don't have Hunt, they're not that great, but you can sort of scoot by with them. And of course, uh, Mangudai and Siege in the late game. Yep. They even have a pretty good navy as well. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're Mongols, right? They're they're never going to be awful. And you can get Hunt at least a little bit more consistently. Um, my Nomad generation for OBNC in particular has pretty decent uh, hunting options. And it's not, like, guaranteed or anything, but there's at least a solid chance of it. Uh, yeah, the Mongols are good, right? <laughs> P -p -p Persians are going to be our last S tier Civ, almost certainly. Persians are, are probably just the best nomad civ right now. Um, after the, the fall from grace of Chinese, it's very sad. Uh, but Persians, like Malians, can get the dock up and the fishing ship out right away. But you also have the extra TC, uh, TC and dock HP to help you out there. Faster work rate means a great boom. You have a great boom into a great army in the late game with paladins and halberdiers and potentially even war elephants. Uh, trash bows maybe as well. Hand cannon. I mean, Persians are awesome, man. Um, and of course, I mean, town center dropping with Persians at, on Nomad. Like, come on. What what kind of human being would I be if I didn't uh, encourage that after the three minute mark, after you complete your first town center? Otherwise, games are just going to suck. So, but yeah, after after three minutes, you can, uh, you can go to Douche City, man. Portuguese, A tier. So Portuguese, uh, you get the free cartography from the very beginning of the game which is really nice on Nomad because uh, even if you're on TeamSpeak with everybody, uh, it's going to be a complete mess trying to figure out where everyone is, especially relative to the positions of your opponents. Um, so that's going to be really nice. Portuguese have an awesome navy. They have a pretty solid uh, land-based army as well when it comes to like organ guns and halberdiers and bombard towers and stuff like that. Um, again, kind of in a similar vein to Italians, Japanese... Like, all these guys. Like, the A-tier civs are just the good hybrid map civs. Really, like, on any hybrid map, these are all probably A-tier civilizations. But Portuguese, I think, get the little extra boost when it comes to uh, the free cartography being just so especially useful on Nomad. And then just all of the other things that make Portuguese great. And they got buffed recently. Saracen... B-tier, I think. So with Saracens... You have faster firing galleys, which means you do have a very powerful navy. Definitely something that isn't thought about too much with the sieve. You can go for a ton of archers and just smash through buildings. That's really good. Um, you have an amazing late game with mamelukes, heavy camels, siege onagers, siege rams, bombard cannons, good monks. Like, you name it. The, the sieve has it. Uh, having the good market can be a big lifesaver. Again, if you just don't have very good resources... Um, like if you're getting tower rushed and you have zero access to gold or stone, Saracen Market comes in and saves the day. Saracens just trade for it, man. Uh, but still, you're lacking an eco bonus beyond that. And 
yeah, you're still missing some key units like Cavaliers and Halberdiers. Um, so I, I don't think they're quite into A-tier territory, but they're definitely a strong, solid B-tier Civ. Slavs. Do they make it to C-tier? Probably not quite. Well, I guess you can think of them in a similar vein to Khmer, but with Khmer you have a little bit of a better naval options with Bracer. Khmer also have a little bit of a better late game. Yeah, I think I have to put them in D-tier. Farming bonuses aren't amazing on Nomad, although if you have a ton of space it's still great. Um, infantry and Siege is still going to be good. Boyars can be situationally great in late game as well. Uh, but your navy's really bad, and it's it's not super easy to get a good eco up and running with Slavs, especially if you don't have a ton of space. Um, so the, the it's a great sieve on land maps, not a, not a great hybrid map sieve. Spanish, a tier, fairly comfortably. So with Spanish, uh, you have the faster builders, good stuff. Uh, get your TC up faster. You have the trade bonus, also good stuff. You have a solid navy. You have conquistadors for like a castle drop into UU. I mean, Spanish is good. It's good, man. Paladins, bombard towers, inquisition monks, halberdiers, siege rams. I probably said that. But yeah, Spanish are good. They're still missing an eco bonus after their, uh, their initial faster town center. And uh, they don't really have a ton of uh, military bonuses. Otherwise, it's mostly their very powerful tech tree. Good unique unit, all that stuff. But not quite S tier, but definitely on the higher end of A tier. Tatars seem C tier to me. There are hills on Nomad. It's not like crazy super mega hill fest, but hill fest? Hill fest is right after Oktoberfest. Um, no. So that can be nice. Your navy's all right with Tatars. Keshex can be really nice. Cav archers can be nice, but again... The Civ is lacking something that makes them especially strong on Nomad. Like, Tatars can be good for the same reason that Tatars are just good in general, and it's not like Nomad especially hampers them in doing that, but it doesn't really help them either. So that sounds C-tier to me. The Rootin' Tootin' Tootins. They're slow. They're really slow, but they're really strong too. Yeah, I, I definitely have to put them in D-tier. Like, Slavs, they still have a really, really strong army. Their eco isn't going to be great on early game, but you do still have an amazing tower rush to help you out in scrappy situations. And yeah, De Deus Volt, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, like Siege Onagers, Ironclad, Bombard Cannons, Halberdiers, all that good stuff. Uh, your navy's awful, but uh, something that I just remember, Crenellation Castles can be awesome on Nomad. You do have Heated Shot as Teutons. Uh, it's not like a huge deal for castles, but it definitely is nice. Meaning you outrange non-elite cannon galleons and bombard cannons from everyone except Turks. Uh, well, you don't outrange them necessarily. Well, you match the range of siege engineer bombard cannons and regular cannon galleons. But yeah, you get the idea. They're still great for holding ground and they're great in choke points, but obviously they're they're not a nomad civ. Turks, C tier. It's always so weird with Turks. So with Turks, you have a very heavy reliance on gold, but if you don't get your gold denied, which is far from a guarantee, but you do have teammates in Big Nomad, and this is still team game, right? This isn't like a 1v1 Nomad tier list. Uh, but Janissaries are great, your navy's pretty good, and your army is amazing. You can go for the cavalry archer hussar race option, or you can go for the gunpowder option, uh, depending on the situation. Like, Turks are still going to be at least pretty good in most situations, but not amazing. Again, Nomad doesn't really... Like, it, it helps them in some ways, but hurts them in others, so it's kind of a wash. Uh, Vietnamese, B-tier. Well, I, uh, I I did not plan this going in, I promise. Well, I mean, I planned S-tier, and then like I thought of some of the A-tier civs, but this is looking nice, man. So with Vietnamese, one, you don't have... To to have the, the wood spent on your eco upgrades, meaning that really helps you in uh, early water scenarios when you can get like uh, bit axe and not having to spend the 50 wood right then, right there, which is actually a really big timing. Um, importantly, you can see where the enemy town centers are, similar vein to the Portuguese bonus. It's actually really, really good. Assuming all these guys are in team speak or something like that, hopefully, um, or Discord or whatever. 
yeah, Vietnamese definitely can be very helpful. Um, and then you just have a, a strong army as Vietnamese. Not really A tier level, I would say, but they're solid. They're totally solid. And finally, last but not least, Vikings A tier. So you don't have fire or galleys, which can be a problem in Feudal Age. But uh, you have longboats and castle age, and those guys are awesome and can completely dominate the seas if left unchecked. The, t uh, the team bonus for docks costing less, also super strong. Uh, you're missing a little bit of like late game punching power, but your eco is still great. And yeah, Vi Vikings are just good to have around, hanging around, doing their Viking thing. I definitely think that it's enough to punch them into A tier. And with that, we have our tiers sorted out. Like I said, I'm, I'm liking this so far. So at this point, um, we're going to switch some sieves around and put some sieves higher than others within the tiers. But I, I do want to stress that this part isn't as important as the overall tiers, and it's kind of just my subjective opinion. And if you're like, no, this sieve should be above this sieve in the same tier, like it, it doesn't matter too much. It just... I do think some sieves are straight towards the top of the tier and some towards the bottom. So this is just going to be my personal opinion on this particular day. Persians I still think are number one. Lithuanians, Malians I think works for me. A tier... I think I put Spanish at the top, at least initially. Maybe Italians, Portuguese, Japanese... Byzantines, Koreans, Malay, Vikings. Yeah, that works for me. I mean, it's it's pretty close. I do think that like these sieves are a little bit better on average than like these sieves, but it's still fairly close, and all of these sieves are are great. Uh, B tier, um, Vietnamese and Mongols and Mayans, and Saracens, Berbers. I mean, it's actually very close. Actually, let's put Berbers at the top of B tier. And then Mongols, Vietnamese, Saracens, Mayans, Burmese, Celts. That looks good to me. Um, our C tier, Turks are pretty decent still. Britons are pretty decent still. So are Tatars, Incas, Bulgarians. kind of like Bulgarians a bit more. Incas, Indians. I think I still like Incas a bit more. Khmer probably going to be at the bottom there. D tier... I mean, this is when the order really uh, starts to matter less. Uh, Ethiopians might be closer to the top. Magyars, eh. It, it, it's kind of a kind of a race to the bottom with this one. Uh, F tier, I actually do like, I think, Goths more than humans. And I do think Chinese are still probably the top of F tier, because if you can get going with them, they're, they're still going to be just fine. So let's just give this one more once over. Yeah, I think this is a solid. I think this is a solid big nomad tier list. So, guys, I hope you were hyped for this event. I hope you found this tier list fun and useful, and it can be a nice little bit of, I think, reference material when it comes to figuring out who has good sieves and who doesn't. And of course, I will be updating this at the end of the tournament, seeing what we've learned as the big nomad meta develops. So, again, uh, July twenty eighth at 16 GMT on my stream. It's going to be starting. Hope you guys are excited and uh, I'll see you guys next time.